friends i am professor rajendra korande from my channel teach easy in this video lecture we will proceed further for moment of inertia which we have started in the previous lecture now in this particular lecture we will see what is the meaning of radius of gyration and the second theorem that is perpendicular axis theorem or polar axis theorem let us first see radius of gyration this is a difficult concept to understand please see carefully consider area a whose centroid is g so this is horizontal centroidal axis now this particular area we want to find out radius of gyration about axis ab so how is axis ab this is axis ab what is done this particular area is squeezed into a very thin strip without changing the area of course and is arranged at such an axis from ab that the moment of inertia of this area about axis ab that is i ab and moment of this elemental strip about i ab or ab will remain same it will not change in that case the distance between these two axes is known as radius of gyration as it is a radius its unit is centimeter mm meter etc it is generally denoted by small r or small k now let us find out its formula now what i have told you in simple meaning radius of gyration is the distance between the two axes such that if the area is squeezed and arranged along a particular axis without changing the moment of inertia then the distance between these two axes is known as radius of gyration you can refer the books and write that particular definition now this moment of inertia of this particular area about ab is i ab that we already know now what is moment of inertia of this elemental strip moment of inertia is second moment of area about the reference axis area is a first moment is into k second moment is into k so it will be area into square of distance what i have told you i ab is moment of inertia of the area about axis ab a is the area which is squeezed into a small strip and arranged along a particular axis such that moment of inertia remains unchanged then this k is radius of gyration therefore i can write the formula for k this is radius of gyration is equal to under root of i ab upon e as it is radius its unit will be meter centimeter mm this is mm raised to 4 upon mm, mm square is mm square root of that is mm so this is a very important formula for radius of gyration that is k this radius of gyration is very important in case of columns which are subjected to buckling in that case we have to find out the slenderness ratio which is the ratio of effective length to 
the minimum radius of gyration. So this is the significance of radius of gyration. This will decide the axis along which the column will buckle. Okay, so this is regarding radius of gyration. Now let us proceed further and see the theorem of perpendicular axis. perpendicular or polar axis theorem. In the last lecture we saw parallel axis theorem. Let us now see the perpendicular axis theorem. Now for that purpose Consider this area E. Let us consider the reference axis. This is centroid. This is horizontal axis passing through centroid, so it is x. This is vertical axis passing through centroid, that is y. And this is the axis which is passing through the centroid, but it is perpendicular to this lamina. Now, as usual, consider any elemental area, its distance from y-axis is x, its distance from x-axis is y. Now look here, this is z-axis. So this is the distance of area from this z-axis which I will denote as r. Okay? Now, let us see what is movement of area second moment of area about zz axis i zz is equal now moment of inertia we know that if this is the z-axis, this is the distance, it is summation of dA into square of the distance that is R square now for r square by Pythagoras, I can write, this is hypotenuse, this is right angle triangle, so r square is equal to x square plus y square, so this is summation dA into x square plus y square. Now if I expand this, I will get I Z Z is equal to C 
summation dA into y square plus summation dA into x square. As per the definition of movement of inertia, this is the product of area and square of the distance. So this is y is the distance from x axis. So this represents i x x and this represents i y y. Therefore, I can write i z z. In some books, it is also called as i p. What is i p? P for polar. In some books, it is also denoted by J is equal to. Again, it is movement of inertia, so there is no problem for that. I Z Z is equal to I X X plus I Y Y. So this is the very important perpendicular axis theorem or polar axis theorem now let us see what is the statement again keep in mind it states that into inverted commas the movement of inertia of a plane lamina about an axis which is perpendicular to that lamina and passing through the centroid of that lamina is the summation of movement of inertia of that lamina about horizontal centroidal axis and movement of inertia of that lamina about vertical centroidal axis in a very short manner i z z is equal to i x plus i y y it is also called as p that is polar axis theorem j it is also called as j this polar axis is very important if you consider that this is the lamina this is the centroid of the lamina then this is its x axis this is its y axis and this is its z axis Whenever fan rotates, fan always rotates about this polar axis. So now this polar axis theorem is very much useful when we study torsion. Because whenever any shaft rotates, it always rotates about the axis which is polar axis. So for shaft, it is always necessary to find out polar movement of inertia that is IP. Now let us see something regarding the significance of all these things. The first one. In the previous lecture, if you say this is the lamina, this will be its x-axis, this will be y-axis. So this is bending about x-axis and this is bending about y-axis. So this particular i-x-x and i-y-y are the major of resistance to the bending. Whereas the polar of movement of inertia is the major of resistance to the twisting. This is x x axis, this is y y axis, so this is bending, so this is bending, okay, it will bend and the twisting will take place about this axis, that is polar axis. So, movement of inertia in the plane gives us the measure of resistance to the bending, whereas polar movement of inertia gives us the measure of resistance to the twisting. 
what is the significance of radius of gyration radius of gyration is important to decide the axis of buckling in case of compression member therefore while calculating the slenderness ratio it is the ratio of effective length to the least radius of gyration radius of gyration is needed therefore to summarize in this lecture we saw the meaning of radius of gyration its formula we saw perpendicular or polar axis theorem its formula and the significance of ixx iyy ip and radius of gyration thank you